Hi viewers, here we are back with the second episode in the series of success talks and believe me, I am sitting here with a very special guest and I'll tell you more about him. He is the curator and the licensee of TEDx Hyderabad. Yes, you guessed it right and that's Mr. Vivek Verma. And Mr. Vivek Verma, if I am going to talk about him, you know, it's going to be a big, big, uh, you know, intro. Let me give you a very uh, brief uh, information. He, you know, has about 35 years of corporate experience, largely into the profit and loss. That's the PNL. And now coming to the, uh, you know, entrepreneurial journey. He has been an entrepreneur for about 10 startups and he has also invested for about 30 startups and he mentored about 50 to 60 startups. Do you really think he's going to stop here? Not at all. We are going to know more about all this journey in Success Talks. And right now, currently, he is positioned as the Chief Impact Officer at Recycle. So let's have him on our show. Sir, welcome to our show, Vivek Verma, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anil, and <laughs> hello to all the viewers. Yeah. Wow. So excited uh, to host you, sir, in our show. It's an opportunity. It's a uh, you know, uh, very uh, uh, big day today, especially because we are nearing for the TEDx Hyderabad, the rising. Absolutely. So, We're just a week away from the rising <laughs> event of TEDx Hyderabad. Wow. Absolutely. Very exciting to know that, sir. Yeah. In fact, first of all, our viewers would love to know, most of them who are also watching this episode, what is TED Talks? Absolutely. It's a, it's a fantastic question and I think more people know about it, the more they will benefit. TED Talks started a couple of decades ago. Essentially, it is about ideas worth spreading. And the origin of this was that, you know, for every success story of a fantastic product idea that the world sees, there are many which are not seen by the world because they haven't succeeded. And that's when the founder of TED, a gentleman called Chris Anderson, decided to pick up these ideas and see how can we take those ideas to the world. Because that product or that success story may not have come out as a success, but somebody else can learn from it and something else may come out. And that's the origin that started of TED a couple of decades ago. And there, are, since then, TED has been a phenomenal platform. They happen. Uh, they they have one annual TED conference, which happens now in Vancouver in Canada. Okay. Used to happen in the U.S. earlier. They've now shifted the venue to Canada. But this is one fantastic event that happens every year. Roughly 1,500 people attend this event, and the idea is to really bring phenomenal ideas that uh, people around the world can learn from. And then about a little over a decade ago, they realized that one event uh, centralized with 1,500 people is not enough for the whole world. The world is a 7 billion population. There are lots of local ideas which also need attention. And that's when TEDx was born. And it's like a child of the TED platform. So TEDx are essentially independently organized uh, events that happen around the world and the idea here is to bring local ideas uh, and and kind of take that uh, to the world and TEDx has now become a phenomenally powerful platform with a little over 3,000 events that happen every single year around the world. So as we speak today there will be about 10 to 12 TEDx ha events happening in some part of the world. So, so that's how powerful this platform has become and each event the talks then go on. Besides the viewers who are listening to the talks sitting in the auditorium, millions of people are watching it on YouTube. So all of these videos then go on to YouTube. Yeah. Great. Now, can anyone do a TED Talk? Uh, practically, yes, anyone can do a TED Talk because it's all about ideas worth sharing. So as long as any human being has an idea which makes sense for others to understand, they can be a TED speaker. They can be a TEDx speaker. The, the way it works is, like I said, TEDx are local events that happen around the world uh, at, at a local level. And TED is the global event that happens uh, at uh, Vancouver. Okay. Now, depending on the idea that people have, each of the event curators, like as a curator for TEDx Hyderabad, uh, me along with my team, select a bunch of speakers to invite to our stage. 
And similarly, TED has a curator along with their team. They invite some of the people to become speakers there. So to long answer, but in short, yes, anyone can be a speaker. Wow. Interesting. Now, can you give us uh, some examples of TED Talk as, as a subject? Well, TED Talk, like I said, is about local ideas. So if I can talk about, let's say, from TEDx Hyderabad platform. In our 2015 edition, which is when we began this journey, we invited a young filmmaker in his early 20s uh, and first time doing a public talk, but passion around making movies on social causes, started with making movies on mobile phone and taking it to great uh, heights. And he came and gave a passionate talk about how making a small movie on a social cause gave people so much more power to be able to do things. And then went on to become a, a regular filmmaker uh, thereafter. Uh, another example I can give of uh, India's first women blade runner, uh, a, a girl, then a young girl called Kiran Kanojia, mm -hmm. who came and gave a talk about how she uh, went through a, a harrowing accident where she was thrown off the train and lost uh, her legs and then went on with loads of difficulties medically because the surgery wasn't done right mm -hmm. and uh, there was some bone protruding. So even putting an artificial leg was a major challenge. Every time she wore her blade and ran, uh, she had major uh, challenges. But despite all of that, she overcame and became India's first uh, marathon uh, runner on blade. So, so like that, the number of uh, speakers are phenomenal. And at a global level, I think, if you look at uh, talks, you know, some of the talks that I am inspired by is uh, one by a global famous speaker called Simon Sinek, mm -hmm. who talks about everything in life is about the why. Mm -hmm. he, he lists out that everything is about what you do, how you do, and why you do. Okay. And he makes a statement there saying, people don't buy what you sell. Mm -hmm. People buy why you sell. Wow. So if you can find your purpose, okay. then things can happen. Great. The history of TED Talks, we have come to know to a large extent. Now, we would love to know when did TEDx Hyderabad start? And, you know, what's the reason how, you know, what motivated you to, you know, start and, you know, uh, as per your passion, it is understood that, you know, you wanted to take up something very big as a challenge. But TEDx Hyderabad is something really big. How did that happen? Yeah. So first of all, I did not start the TEDx Hyderabad uh, initiative. I joined it as a volunteer. This was in 2014. Okay. This was started by a gentleman called Dr. Vipin Anthony Das, who is now my co-organizer. He is very much an active part of the team. Okay. But he was, he is a TED senior fellow mm -hmm. and he decided that we need to bring this platform to Hyderabad. Okay. So in 2014, he put out a post on social media to put a team together, mm -hmm. asking for volunteers. Okay. And I obviously put my hand up saying I want to be a volunteer because I was watching TED uh, and TEDx talks before and I saw an opportunity to join. So 2014 is when my journey with uh, TEDx Hyderabad began. And practically TEDx Hyderabad began. That okay. was our first edition we did in 2015. Oh. Uh, and I was uh, part of the team as a volunteer. And then in a matter of one or two years uh, with, with exactly the vision you talked about that I wanted to take it to a much larger level. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I took over as the, as the organizer and the curator uh, in 2017. And thereafter, I've been running the event uh, all along. So, so I, I just wanted to make sure I clarify that I did not start. I was part of the startup team, but I was not the uh, originator of the TEDx Hyderabad uh, event. Uh, but your other part of you know what, why did we start and what did we go about and bring it here? So when I joined with 30 plus years of corporate experience, I was very clear that I want to run this as an independent activity and run it in a very transparent manner uh, and run it to make it the intellectual event of the city. This should be a place where the entire city congregates to say that here's an opportunity for us to listen to brilliant ideas, 
but it's not just about the speaker on stage it's equally about the attendee in the audience okay. so so our idea was to really curate it from multiple aspects that how do we bring the best speaker how do we bring the best attendees mm -hmm. and how do we make the networking happen okay. because the impact and the change needs to happen post the event if we don't want our speakers to get infatuated with something mm. and then a few days later you know let it all die down True. which is what quite often happens with most of us me included that you listen to some fantastic talk you get fully flowed and infatuated but 10 days later you don't know what you can do to take it forward mm. so our idea was to really work on that yeah. and that's when ted originally stands for technology uh, started with uh, you know engineering okay. and design okay. got changed to technology entertainment and design okay. uh, whereas at tedx hyderabad mm -hmm. uh, we created a new full form for ted oh. which is thinkers enablers and doers super one idea at a time Absolutely. so the x stands for one idea at a time so our idea was to really bring and build a community of thinkers enablers and doers so our speakers are our thinkers our uh, attendees are our doers and there are many people where we classify ourselves to our enablers and until we can bring all these three categories together social impact can't happen Super. and that's the mission that we are working on at tedx hyderabad that how do we make that happen for for the city of hyderabad oh great amazing information that was so since you talked about tedx hyderabad the new thought process what you have imbibed into tedx hyderabad we would love to know especially this particular season tedx hyderabad the rising can we know more highlights about the speakers or this you know more information about that sure so tedx hyderabad typically every year and so will it be on on the 18th of september mm -hmm. the theme is rising it's a day long experience that we create okay. and the experience i say because it's a combination of a few things mm -hmm. we are bringing 13 phenomenal speakers this year uh, who will all give a talk mm -hmm. sharing their ideas sharing their story sharing their life mm -hmm. with the audience to understand the idea that they have what they did and how each of us can learn from that okay. but a tedx hyderabad event is not limited to just these speakers talking about it mm -hmm. we also create what we call a phenomenal experience zone okay. where our attendees can also come and experience some products or some experiences that our partners create mm -hmm. and and here is where a few product launches happen here is where a lot of companies come and showcase their products so this year we are going to have some metaverse experiences that people can come and experience unique unique ah. we are going to have some fitness related experiences that our attendees can come and experience mm -hmm. we are going to have some experiences around recycling that they can come and uh, experience okay. and things like that so our idea is really for an attendee not just to get the intellectual uh, part which okay. is the talks okay. is also to look at experiences mm -hmm. we have some four amazing performers oh. who are going to come and perform to give a break from that intellectual side of things okay. and then the last but not the least is the networking opportunity wow. all our 13 speakers interact with the attendees mm. so it isn't somebody just comes and delivers a talk and goes away our speakers will spend the day with us yeah. so our attendees have an opportunity to meet our speakers we typically do 45 minute coffee breaks one and a half hour lunch break the idea is to use that time to go into the experience zone network with speakers wow. and of course enjoy the lovely cuisine in hyderabad nothing can happen without food <laughs> so so Definitely. obviously enjoy the food there so. trust me i feel like this is a festival it is it is a festival of exchange of thoughts absolutely you know with all intellectuals coming on board and this is a great opportunity absolutely phenomenal opportunity and wow. that's how thankfully in the 8 years that we've been around uh, or the 7th edition that we are bringing out now thankfully the city has seen it that way and we see phenomenal uh, response yes. 
you know, from the corporate world, from the educational institutes, mm -hmm. and from public at large who want to come and partner and participate with us and join us in this journey. It is a, it is a journey. It's an experience. It's like you rightly said, it's an outstanding yes. day to come and spend with us. Great. Now, uh, I would also know, like to know, like, you know, first of all, after you have told me that, you know, thinkers, enablers, and doers, but when the TED Talk has actually started, you know, some years back, what was the reason for them to think about TED? You know, uh, as you said, there was something talking about the engineers as okay. well. Any specific reason behind that? So, see, this, this originated in the US, mm -hmm. largely around the Silicon Valley. Okay. And at that stage, a lot of it was about technology. Mm. And hence, technology, engineering, design. Oh, you know, so, okay. and, and that's where, as we hear the stories about garage, okay. Uh, startups oh, or garage yes. thinking that used to happen and many of them would die down in the garage because it never saw the day of the light and, and that's when Chris Anderson the founder of mm. TED felt that all those ideas which you know for the world have died uh, because the the people who had that idea couldn't take it to a, a product level or the or the world was not ready to accept it some of those could be used by somebody else so why don't we bring those ideas to the lovely ideas which succeeded anyways we heard about True. you know the microsofts of the world yes. and the googles of the world we heard about yes. but what happened to the others yes. so that's where it originated mm. and then as when time went by then you know they felt that technology engineering are kind of similar so yes. then the e changed to entertainment because the world was also moving to entertainment and wow. there's always a scope for a scope for improvement i'm sure there is scope for improvement i don't know five <laughs> years from now the ted may mean something else at a global level but uh, today at least technology entertainment and design are still very very relevant oh, wow. and i think the last two years have told us the importance of the e uh, exactly. in terms of the entertainment. I because. have understood your point. <laughs> <laughs> and, and interestingly, a couple of years ago, I think in 2017, mm -hmm. we had uh, Rana Dagubati, uh, the, the famous film star okay. from, uh, who was a speaker with us at TEDx Hyderabad. Okay. And his talk was essentially revolving around the medium change for entertainment. Okay. You know, how from single screen cinemas, and he comes from a family of entertainers yes. for a long time. Yes. So how their family has seen single screen uh, cinema halls mm -hmm. to uh, multiplexes, yes. and now how the world has moved to a mobile device. Correct. And how entertainment meant only song and dance, Correct. to now Kabaddi is an entertainment. Correct. And Very you know, so, so how, Every form of entertainment, evolved. whether it's the medium yes. or whether it's the entertainment yes. itself, has evolved and yes. how people have to evolve. No doubt. Yeah. So, so entertainment is a very, very uh, integral part of our life. <laughs> it's a today. dynamic thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Now, coming to this very important question, uh, there are lots of youngsters who are also watching this uh, series. We would want them to understand mm -hmm. and want them to uh, know this thing, what can be a good topic for a TED talk? So I, I would say that, you know, uh, I don't think the, the starting point should be whatever is the work they are doing. Mm -hmm. See, what happens typically is that there are two ways for you to become a speaker mm -hmm. at a TEDx platform. One is to say, I want to become a speaker. Mm -hmm and then start saying, okay, what can I talk about? Okay. Uh, and, and the other way is that I will do some outstanding work, mm -hmm. and then I will go and talk about that on a platform. Okay. Our recommendation at, at TEDx Hyderabad is the latter, okay. that don't start focusing on, I want to be a speaker, and then I will choose a topic. Because okay. at least with TEDx Hyderabad, it will not work. Okay. Our, our event is purely by invitation to mm -hmm. speakers. And our criteria for selecting a speaker is the work that the speaker has done. Okay. And it doesn't matter you know, about the public speaking space. Yes. Like we've said, we've invited many speakers who've never done a public talk before. Oh. But they have done outstanding work. And that is what our platform stands for, to bring them to the world. So it's all about the work you do, Correct. less about the talk 
that you want to do. So, so in, in fact, so much so to the extent that if we have some, pe some people mm -hmm. who reach out to us multiple times saying, you know, I want to do a talk, I want to do a talk, <laughs> uh, we actually largely put them in what we call a negative list. Okay. That, you know, we haven't seen the body of work, wow. but we have seen a desire to become a speaker. Okay. And if that's the intent, then really speaking, we are not keen to bring uh, you to our platform. And not to sound uh, you know, very uh, negative about it, but we have a lot of people who, you know, quote unquote, call them themselves motivational speakers. True. Uh, so, you know, and many of them have done fantastic work, yes. but many of them haven't done anything and are just kind of giving us some uh, Gyan, if I may call it, which is yes. coming from internet or somewhere else. So we are very particular about the body of work they have done. Correct. So our, we have a research team who okay. does extensive research oh. before we approach a speaker. That's we spent nice. two plus months wow. in selecting the first cut of speakers, which is okay. usually a little over 50 speakers. Oh from which we will select the 13 or 14 who will actually come and speak on our stage. Oh my so it's a, a four-month process to select the speaker and it's a three-month process to curate the talk with the speaker. So it's a oh. six, seven-month process before we see the speaker go up on stage, stand on the red dot and deliver the talk. Wow. Yeah. Very so a lot goes behind it. Yeah. So what, uh, you know, I think our uh, viewers must understand is, like, it's the work which creates the impact onto the society. That's right. That really should speak for itself. That's right. And then you become automatically eligible That's to right. be a speaker. Absolutely right. That's the best way to articulate it. That let your work wow. speak yes. and then you will get an opportunity. And typically that's where most TEDx event and the TED event also focuses on. Where right. is the body of work? What impact have you created? And can a common human being sitting in the audience take something away from it? Correct. Or is it just that, you know, this is what happens in a, in a NASA facility? Yes. You know, so, so is there something I can take away from Correct. it? Correct. Even yes. in that NASA experience, Correct. is there Correct. a learning that I can true. take away from that? Very true. Yeah. For example, again, you know, in 2015, mm -hmm. we invited Ritu Karidal the lady behind the mission on Mars. Okay. She was the mission director for mission on Mars. So if you remember the first time uh, the, the mission on Mars went and the team stood there, which was all women team, mm -hmm. which was behind that. And she was the director there. And when she came and talked about the work that went on mm -hmm. uh, to put that mission on Mars, okay. there was loads of learnings that our audience could take away from that. Okay. So it was less about the mission on Mars, okay. but more about what and how they went about it, from which we can make our own uh, learnings, learnings and takes to take it forward. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Very important uh, point uh, just reminded me with your uh, uh, in information. What can be the different types of TED Talks? Like, you know, uh, are they going to be onto uh, business? Are they going to be the real meaning of life? Or is it going to be something else? What it could be? Well, it could be anything. So okay. there is no restriction okay. on what it could be. Mm -hmm. The only thing that as a format TED, mm -hmm. TEDx stays away from mm -hmm. are Typically, what most media will stay away from, okay. religion, okay. sex, yes. you know, and, and anything which will cause, you know, uh, separation, castism, you Correct. know, all of these uh, the generic notions Correct. that media stays away from. Yes. But besides that, any other topic, we've had Correct. people from culture, wow. we have, in fact, on the 18th of September this year, you will hear an uh, animal psychologist who's oh. going to come and talk about the work that she does with animals on the, in the space of psychology. So oh. this is not about physical training. We've heard many people come and talk about dog training yes. or horse training on the physical side of that it. That would lead to misconception. That's yes. right. So, so here's someone who's coming and talking about psychology with, okay. with animals. So it could be on any topic. We've had people on organic farming. We've had oh. people on movie making, on weaving, oh. on uh, you know sports, of course, okay. on medicine, of course, okay. on startups, of course, business, for sure. Mm. I mean, those, those are for sure topics, but okay. there are offbeat. We have somebody who's coming to talk to us this year about disaster management. Oh. 
Oh. He's a global expert flying in from Europe okay. uh, to talk to us about uh, an Indian, but uh, based now in Europe and works with the uh, leading disaster management institute there. And will talk to us about that. So it's, it's a wide variety of speakers. We have also got the ex uh, cricketing coach of the Indian uh, men's cricket team, oh. a gentleman called R. Sridhar. So if, if any of your audience has looked at the way Indian cricketing team has changed over the last decade or so in yes. the space of fielding, yes. here's the man responsible for making that difference. And he's wow. going to come and talk to us about that, wow. what made that difference for our cricketing team to become what they have become. Definitely. We have another phenomenal speaker this year, a gentleman called Tinkesh. Mm -hmm. He is a triple amputee. And, uh, and he's going to come and talk to us about uh, scuba diving that he does, oh. para jumping that he does. You know, and most of us with both arms and both legs are also not able to do many Correct. of the things that Tinkesh does. Correct. And he's going to come and talk to us about all of that. So it can be from any sphere. There is okay. no, because ideas exist yes. everywhere. Absolutely. And ideas are what we can learn from yeah. anywhere. That's so, the only spark. That's the only spark. The only <laughs> thing that we look for is ideas worth spreading. I think uh, the disaster management uh, expert who's coming down definitely is the need of the hour, absolutely. especially looking at the rains havoc in Bangalore, Bangalore City. And absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> it's really going to uh, help. Emmanuel Raju is going to tell us some <laughs> outstanding pieces around oh. uh, history of disaster management and how wow. we look at that and all of that. So, no, it's definitely a welcome idea. Uh, now, very importantly, can we also know more about the TEDx Hyderabad, the kind of entire initiative this year, especially uh, last time when you did it, that was before the lockdown. So before the lockdown and now, what has been the difference and what has been the uh, big change what you can see as, as a curator, as a licensee of TEDx Hyderabad? Absolutely. Thanks, Anil. So 2019 is when we did the last physical edition. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then 2020, we did a virtual edition. Oh. So I think we were the, one of the first ones around the world to do a physical uh, TEDx Hyderabad uh, event. Oh. And this we did in the month of May. You know, we all got locked down end yes. of March, early yes. April. Yes. And we did this event in May. Okay. And so the one big difference in the virtual edition we had to do was that 18 minute format, okay. a whole day event okay. are things that cannot work. Okay. So we shrunk that to a nine minute talk and we shrunk the whole event to a three hour event mm -hmm. and had a phenomenal success with that in 2020. Okay. 21, we decided to take a break because uh, all of us were tired of Correct. virtual. Yes. We were already spending eight, 10 hours in front of a screen Correct. and <laughs> physicals were not possible. True. So we took a, a break that year and we are back with a bang in 2022. Now, if I was to compare 19 and 22, I think one difference is that we have chosen to scale the event down. Okay. Our 2019 edition had almost 3,000 people mm -hmm. attending the event. Okay. This year, we will have only 1,500 odd people attending the event, okay. partly because of COVID protocols. Yes. You know, we need to maintain social distancing. Correct. Correct. You know, so the seating has to be planned accordingly yes. and all of that. Okay. And partly also because a lot of people are working from home, mm -hmm. are not in the cities, okay. they're living in, in their hometowns. Correct. So the, the audience will also go down. So okay. one big difference between last time and this time is the number of people. people. Uh, but it will still be 1,500 people who will be there. It's, uh, it's, it's fairly large uh -huh. that will uh, happen. The second thing I think is our whole mindsets have changed. So. Mm -hmm. In the curation, mm -hmm. one of the things we have to be working much harder now okay. is that the audience uptake is now has the talk has to be a lot more powerful. Correct. Meaning Don't earlier worry. people had the patience to give you that 18 minutes. You know, now if I don't catch the attention in the first True. few minutes, you know, we will lose the audience because Correct. all of us are now getting used to shorter and shorter cycles. Correct. So as a curator, our yes. team is working towards that this year okay. to really work with the speakers to mm -hmm. see how do we work with their talks such that the audience engagement stays. Mm -hmm. So engagement has been a big difference yes. from the pre-pandemic world yes. to the post-pandemic world. True. And I think third and the last piece is that while we do all of this in terms of uh, you know the social distancing and all of that, 
there is equally a very strong desire yes. of a human being yes. to come to an event where I can network, where I can yes. do all of that. Yes. So it's kind of finding that right balance that I do want to come, but I want to make sure all the things are, are uh, done in a manner that I'll still be safe. So that puts additional pressure on us as the for on me and my team to really curate the event such that you know all protocols all norms all of them are kind of taken care of people's safety is kind yes. of paramount importance yes. so that's the other uh, difference i think most of the world is uh, seeing excellent it has been a great uh, kind of this journey in the series of success talks uh, trust me uh, vivek sir like you know uh, it's very encouraging and at the same time the time flies you know so fast like literally this has been a very educating session especially for me and i hope with you know with all our so. guests definitely they are going to enjoy a lot and this year tedx uh, hyderabad's rising theme you know would definitely going to you know complement that absolutely and and <laughs> we would like to have as many of your viewers join us yes. you know so if any of you are interested do join us tedxhyderabad.com is where you can come and register and join us and especially the the younger generation yes. not that the other generations are not welcome yeah. we are age agnostic we are gender agnostic <laughs> you know we are profession agnostic Correct. but especially my appeal to the younger generation is that they should really look at intellectual events like this because when they are at their early stages of their life especially the professional lives i think the inspiration that they can draw uh, and not just from the speakers like i've said you know our events are equally about the attendees you know because you will end up spending Correct. time sitting next Correct. to somebody who may be an achiever Correct. he may not be on stage today yes. but that person is equally an achiever no, no. and you make numerous friends we've had enough cases of people who met at a tedx hyderabad event and have gone on to make movies together oh. have gone on to find found companies as in they founded companies together mm -hmm. they became co-founders okay. they have people who have joined jobs based on who they met at a tedx okay. hyderabad event we've even had a few people who got married because they met at a tedx hyderabad event so sweet. so so, <laughs> so you don't know what can happen come <laughs> join us there and god knows what spark can happen wow that's amazing with that we would uh, definitely you know uh, thank you very much sir for your uh, you know visit to our studio and it has been very encouraging and this is not just the finish this is just the beginning with vivek sir we are going to come up with many more ideas and many more content especially with vivek ji so thank you very much for your time sir thank you once again thank you thank you anil thank you for inviting me over to your studio and look forward to talking to you and yes. through you to all your viewers thank you sir thank, thank you, you very much